Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. Hopefully you all are going to enjoy this episode. I'm not necessarily enjoying it, but I'm enjoying bringing it to you, let's put it that way. Because in this episode we're going to talk about how to control pests in the garden naturally, specifically aphids. And so in this episode we're going to be taking care of some aphid issues that we have on our chamomile here. Now aphids are, I mean, they're, they're a pest that come into pretty much anyone's garden, and I don't know a year we have not had them. But this year specifically, it has been super hot, super dry, and when I say super dry, I mean, we're talking drought status in, in what we would consider spring. So this should be normally our wet season, but it is the driest month on record. We have had almost no rain in the month of, of uh, well, in the month of June, we've had no rain, but also in the month of May, we had almost no rain. So this has been just, an, it's been a terror on these plants because when plants are stressed, they give off pheromones. And so those pheromones are, are kind of chemical signals to uh, other plants that say, hey, I'm stressed, I need to flower, you should flower as well. And plants will actually communicate with each other using the use of pheromones. It's an incredible, incredible thing that nature has done. And so because they need to pollinate and they need to reproduce, what they will do is they will go to flower and that chemical scent will travel over to other plants, causing them to flower around the same time. And it will also cause them to build up their defense mechanisms because what happens when they're stressed, they, they send off that signal, that, that pheromone, and pests will hone in on that, specifically aphids, but also other plants like uh, hornworms, um, squash vine borers, things like uh, white flies. You have so many different pests in the garden and all of them will target those pheromones. And so what we can do is we can uh, let it go, let nature kind of take its course. That's your first option to controlling these. Oftentimes, predatory insects will come in like uh, like um, ladybugs. We could actually buy ladybugs um, and release them in the garden. That'd be a good option. However, we did not catch these soon enough and they have kind of taken hold and I don't want them to take too much of a hold because this is my garden. You know? This is my garden, not their garden. And so I don't want them to take too big of a hold and had I noticed them about, a, you know, maybe probably about a week ago or so, um, I, I probably would have bought ladybugs and released them because that's the most natural option. Um, but Today we're going to be using neem oil. Now we sell this in the store. This is 100% cold pressed neem oil and 100% cold pressed neem oil has something in it that not, uh, not all neem oil has because not all neem oil is created equal. Uh, cold pressed neem oil has a chemical in it called azadiractin and azadiractin is a, is a chemical found naturally in, in the neem plant that will uh, basically stop the, the egg laying cycle of the of the aphids it's safe for humans um, i mean i wouldn't i'd never recommend drinking it or anything like that but um, it, it is a it is a totally safe chemical around humans so don't worry you're not going to go sterile or anything <laughs> um, but yeah so we're going to spray the cold pressed neem oil onto the aphids and what that will essentially do is in about a week or so time they will they will, they will stop being able to reproduce and they will simply die. And so uh, what we're doing is we are saturating these plants down. Uh, but what also we wanna do is we want to uh, have ants leave the premise as well. And so we're going to spray the base of the plant to, pr uh, to prevent any ants from coming up the, uh, up the stem of the plant because ants will actually keep the cycle going because ants are attracted to the honeydew of the of the aphids here. The aphids, when they chew on the the plant, it actually they'll secrete a sugary substance that is energy that the plant is trying to use. But they're actually mining that sugar that the plant is producing through photosynthesis and using it as a food source. And then ants love it, and that brings ants to the garden. So we're going to spray around the base of the plant. We're going to spray the plant heavily, and that should solve the problem. So how are we going to do that? We have a gallon of water here in a sprayer. Pump sprayers are a gardener's best friend. Foliar applications for fertilizer, applying um, organic pesticides and things like that. 
Now, what you'll find in cold press neem oil is that it solidifies sometimes, and ours has solidified just a little bit as well. When it gets cold, it will begin to uh, kind of coagulate a little bit. Um, and that just, I mean, that happens in, in all oils you see, like coconut oil even, will, will turn solid. And that's perfectly fine. It's not an issue. You can just throw it in uh, just a little pot of, of simmering water and that, that not warm, but hot temperatures will um, cause the, the oil to um, reliquify. Um, but we still have quite a bit of liquid in here. It's only slightly solidified. So I'm gonna pour in about a tablespoon or so into the water. Okay. You can go as strong as two tablespoons per gallon. I find that a tablespoon does just fine. And the next thing we want is some, what they would consider like non-toxic dish soap. Um, you don't want anything that has dyes or, or really heavy um, synthetic chemicals in it. So natural dish soap is what you use for this case because we're putting it in the garden. And you need about four or five drops of that. Nothing crazy, but you need something that is going to emulsify because oil and water don't mix. And so we're going to put that in there and then put the lid on, give it a good shake to emulsify that neem oil into, this, into the water. And we're ready to plant, or we're ready to spray the plants. Uh, so coming in close, I'll, ch I'll show you the, uh, the way we spray. The way we spray is going to, do, to be twofold. It's going to be a high power spray to knock off any aphids, because when you knock them off, they will usually die. And then we're also going to spray them, which is going to saturate them, and any survivors will be soaked in the neem oil and azadiractin, which will allow them not to make any more, lay any more eggs. So that's going to stop the, the cycle. So let's go. So you can see here are the aphids, and they are up and down the stems here. And all we're going to do is adjust the flow. So it's a pretty heavy flow there, and we're just going to soak the plant. Now, if this was something like a tomato plant or a kale plant, something that had real thick leaves, we want to, we'd want to get on the underside of the leaves. But since it's a chamomile plant and they hardly have any, you know, what you consider leaves at all, you pretty much spray right down, which makes it really easy for me. But definitely make sure to get the undersides of the leaves. That's where the aphids survive. And we're just kind of power washing this plant down, power washing the aphids off. And we will have a relatively aphid free plant in a matter of days. Remember, we're going to saturate the ground around the plant so that any and all ants are kind of discouraged to climb up the plant to mine that honeydew, because that will simply just attract more aphids back to the plant. So there you go, there is how to take care of aphids in the garden organically. I really, want to, I really quick want to go over the different methods again for those of you that did not catch them in the beginning, and that is doing nothing and letting pests come in, or uh, letting predators come in naturally to take care of the pests. You can bring in predatory insects, which we have videos on about releasing ladybugs in the garden. That's always awesome to watch and uh, very effective, mind you. Then there's also a uh, chemical, uh, the chemical route, which is neem oil or pyrethrin is another option. Uh, diatomaceous earth is another option. But I find cold pressed neem oil with the azadiractin in it is by far the most effective for aphids specifically. If you have things like uh, like beetles or things like that, diatomaceous earth would be your go-to uh, go-to application. If you have chewing caterpillars and things like that, I'd recommend using uh, uh, BT, which is Bacillus thuringiensis, and that is uh, we have a video on that as well. So I'm gonna try to find all those video links and I'll post them in the uh, description box below with their respective pests that they uh, that they deter. So anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new and we'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.